What's up hikers, Bigfoot here. Planning to through hike the John Muir Trail can be a daunting task just to figure out the permitting alone. Today, I wanna to cover all the details of my plans for my upcoming through hike of the John Muir Trail. All right, well, to kick things off, let's talk about the permit process because everything is going to be predicated off of your permit. Now, I'm going to do a full video of the permit and the process next week, but I do want to just share with you some of the highlights. So your entire through hike will be predicated off of this permit. The permit is in very, very high demand, so much so that you need to apply for the permit 24 weeks in advance. And to the date, it has to be 24 weeks in advance. The reason for that is there are 45 total permits that they give out each day out of Yosemite. Now, out of Yosemite, those 45 permits, the ranger told me they have 1,000 people applying each and every day for those permits. Now, those 1,000 people, they can put up to a 21-day window of when they want to through-hike the John Muir Trail for permitting. So uh, if you enter the lottery on your first date, that is on the permit, and you get declined, which is most likely going to happen, then it will roll into the second day. And the third day, all the way up to 21 total days. If you don't get it after 21 days, then you'll have to fill out another permit for an additional 21 days. But uh, the key highlight here is there can be as many as 21,000 people vying for 45 permits out of Yosemite. That is a huge number. So you have to get really lucky to get a permit, but you don't want to do a ton of planning around a lot of things until you are assured that you can get a permit. Now, there are some other options. You can get walk-up permits, and you don't have to start in the north. You can start at different areas. Again, I will cover that when I talk about permitting next week. Now, for my personal permit, I enter Happy Isles, which is the most popular area to enter. I get to enter on Sunday, September 10th. So that is the start of my John Muir Trail through hike. So I arrange transportation airfare. I'm gonna fly into the Reno Airport, which the website, the JMT PCT website, recommends that Reno is a great place to fly in and out of. They do have shuttles that make it more convenient to be able to figure out how you're gonna get from Reno to Yosemite. Uh, but I'll talk about that in just a moment. But I'm gonna fly into Reno on Saturday, September 9th. And my plan is, at first, was uh, trying to figure out how I'm going to get from Reno down to Yosemite. Now, there are a couple different options. The most popular option is getting a bus that runs from Reno all the way down to Lone Pine, Lone Pine all the way back up to Reno. The only problem with that is that bus only runs Monday through Friday during the time of which I am heading out there. So I get there on a Saturday, that bus isn't running on the weekends. That's a problem. And then to top it off, the shuttle that runs from Lee Vining or Mammoth Lakes, which will be where you will take your bus from Reno down to so that you can get connected over to Yosemite, that only runs on the weekends. So definitely has some challenges. I'll talk more about that in a different video. But uh, this is what I'm going to do. I actually have a trail angel. I'm really, really lucky. Someone reached out to me and they offered to pick me up in Reno on Saturday when I land, and they're actually going to give me a ride all the way to Yosemite, which is about a four and a half hour drive. So I'm really, really lucky that uh, that, that kind of just fell in my, in my lap, and uh, I am so thankful for that. Now, in the event that something happens and it, it falls through, I'm not able to do that, my backup option is to rent a car from Reno, from the airport, and what I'll do is I'll drive that car down to Mammoth Lakes. Now, some of you might say, well, why wouldn't I just go to Lee Vining? Because it is closer to Yosemite. Well, there is, to my best knowledge and the research that I did, there aren't any car rental places in Lee Vining, only in Mammoth Lakes. So I will take a car down to Mammoth Lakes and then what I'll do is I will stay at uh, one of the lodges down there. There 
are a few different points that Yarts, which is the bus service that will go from Mammoth Lakes to Levining and into Yosemite, they will pick you up as early as about 8 o'clock in the morning on the weekends, both Saturdays and Sundays. So what I'll do is I'll get on that shuttle and it will make its way up to Levining and then it will cut over and drop me off in Yosemite Valley probably sometime around noon on Sunday. So that is my backup option in the event that I'm that the, something happens with the trail angel and I don't get picked up. That was the big one trying to figure out how it's going to get from Reno and into Yosemite. Now providing that I get into Yosemite on Saturday there is a backpackers campsite that you can stay at the day before and the day after that you pick up your permit. So this works out really well for me since my permit is for September 10th. I'll be able to pick up my permit on September 9th and what I'll do is I'll stay at this backpackers campsite. It's six dollars which is really cheap and I have a place to stay in Yosemite. If I didn't stay there the options are kind of up in the air because most of the places to stay in Yosemite are really, really expensive. So they, it works out really well that they offer the service for folks that just need somewhere to stay until their date of permit opens up. So I'll be staying at the backpackers campsite on the night of Saturday, and then I'll be ready to get on right out of Happy Isles on Sunday morning, September 10th. Now, one of the things, if you get a permit out of Happy Isles, out of Yosemite Valley, you are forced to stay at Little Yosemite Valley Campground, which is about four and a half miles up the trail. Not a lot of mileage, and uh, I haven't done a ton of research on this, but I assume the reason why they have you stay there is for you to be able to acclimate yourself. You start in Yosemite somewhere right around 4,000 or so feet, and you're going to climb up to, I think that campsite is somewhere close to 7,000 feet. So you'll climb about 3,000 feet and then you'll acclimate yourself that night. So uh, the chances of you getting altitude sickness is less, but they do require you to stay at Little Yosemite Valley out of Happy Isles that first night, which is what I'll be doing. Now, with my permit, I do have the ability to hike up Half Dome, which I am going to do. And my plan is to set up base camp when I get to Little Yosemite Valley, probably sometime that late morning, maybe really early afternoon, and I'm gonna go up Half Dome on Sunday the 10th. So I'll set up base camp, about two miles up the trail is where the junction is to head to Half Dome. So I'll go up to the trail junction, I'll head over to Half Dome, which is an additional two miles, so I think about four miles in total from Little Yosemite Valley. I'll go do Half Dome, and then I'll come back and hike back to Little Yosemite Valley. So that's my plans for day one on the John Muir Trail. After that, things get very, very loose. I don't have any restrictions apart from one, and that is making it back up to Reno for my flight on Monday, September 25th. So what my plan is, is I'm starting again on Sunday, the 10th of September. And I'm planning on being done no later than Saturday, September 23rd, two full weeks, which hiking 210 miles puts my average somewhere in that 15 mile per day range, totally doable with me being able to really enjoy the experience of the John Muir Trail. So I will more than likely attempt to be done by that early morning, maybe early afternoon on Saturday, September 23rd give me enough time to be able to get back up to Reno. All right, resupplies. So I will be doing one resupply during the course of my entire through hike. The problem that I run into with through hiking the John Muir Trail is the time of which I am going, many places shut down. About mid-September, many of the resupply points are closed for the season. So what my plan is, I am going to do a resupply. I'm going to send a resupply to Vermilion Valley Resort. Now that is somewhere about mile marker 82, I think, 80 to 82 heading southbound. So 
I will resupply at uh, Vermilion Valley Resort, and then that resupply box will need to last me the last 120 miles. So that is what my plan is for resupplying on the John Muir Trail. Now, if I was going earlier in the season, I would have more resupply options. I will do a video just on resupplying on the John Muir Trail, what your options are, and what the options look like for sending a resupply because it is totally different than sending a resupply to like trail towns or post offices on the Appalachian Trail. So that is what my plan is for resupplying on the John Muir Trail. Now I mentioned I'm going to be averaging somewhere around that 15 miles per day. Now of course that first day is only going to be five miles because I have to stay at Little Yosemite Valley. So doing the math, I'm going to have to average a little bit more than 15 miles a day. And really what I want to do is, is have no plan outside of staying where I need to stay on day one, being at the Vermilion Valley Resort to do my midpoint resupply. Outside of that, and of course, getting to the very end, Mount Whitney, on no later than that Saturday, September 23rd. But I don't want to have any plans of having to be at a certain area by a certain time if there is a miraculous campsite that I just cannot pass up. I'm not going to pass it up. I'm going to stay there. So uh, if there's some days where I hike 25 miles because there's nothing that I find that is compelling enough for me to stop on the day, then I'll keep on going. So I'm really going to kind of play it by ear. It's going to be really exciting because I do have time on my side for this through hike. Now as it pertains to zeros, I'm not going to take any zeros on the JMT. I will probably stay at the Vermilion Valley Resort when I pick up my resupply. So my plan is to end the day at Vermilion Valley Resort. And outside of that, I don't know that there's going to be any other places that I'm going to stop and stay at during the course of my through hike. Would really love to stay at the John Muir Trail Ranch, but that closes, I believe, somewhere around September 15th. So probably won't make it for that, but that's okay. It's going to be great anyway, and I will take advantage of what I get. But as it sits right now, I'm not planning on staying anywhere other than the Vermilion Valley Resort when I pick up my resupply. How am I getting back up to Reno when I finish my through hike? So what I'll be doing is, again, if I summit Mount Whitney on the 23rd of September, I will then go to the nearest town, which is Lone Pine. I'll stay in Lone Pine that Saturday night. And then my intention is to get up to Mammoth Lakes and rent a car, and then I'll have the ability to go wherever I want. Uh, if I get done a little bit earlier than that, I'll be able to spend a little more time in that area. But again, I'll probably be up there maybe Sunday, the 24th, the day before I leave. Now, getting from Lone Pine to Mammoth Lakes, you can hitch it. I guess it's an easy hitch, but I'm not relying on that. My backup plan for getting up there, because there's no shuttles, that are running during the weekends. If it was the week, I'd be able to take a shuttle, a bus, from Lone Pine all the way up to Reno. But again, the problem is, is I leave on Monday at about noon. And the shuttle leaves on Monday morning at six in the morning. It doesn't get into Reno until noon. So that's not gonna work out. So I have to get back up there sometime Sunday. So what my backup plan is, I will get an Uber from Lone Pine up to Mammoth Lakes to drop me off at the Enterprise so I can rent a car and then get up to Reno. Now there is another city, Bishop, California, that does have an Enterprise at that's closer than, than Mammoth Lakes. The only problem with that is they're not open on the weekends. Does not do me any good unless if I get done Friday and can get up to Bishop. But if it is on the weekend, I will take it up to Mammoth Lakes. If it's during the week, within the time frames when the enterprise is open in Bishop, then I'll take a Uber or a hitch, whatever I need to, to get up to Bishop. So that is my plan. How am I getting back to Reno that involves renting a car? Now, as it pertains to gear, I'll be doing a full gear video of everything that I'm bringing. I'm bringing some new gear out there with me. I'm bringing some old gear out there with me and uh, really excited about some of the new things that I'll be bringing out there. Now, because of the temperatures, this is going to be a three season setup and I'll be bringing a 20 degree bag, which is 
colder than what I brought on the Appalachian Trail. I had a 40 degree bag when I was out there for how warm the climate was going to be during my summer through hike. Since this is getting right around that fall area, I want to make sure that I have something warm enough for temperatures that I could see. So I will have a 20 degree bag, but again, I'll talk more about what my selections are a little bit later when I go through a full gear video. Now, one of the requirements of heading out of Yosemite is you have to have a bear canister to through hike the John Muir Trail. So I will have a bear canister as well for another piece of gear that's a little bit different than what you guys have seen with my other gear videos. And I am cooking. I'll be cooking on the John Muir Trail. And what I'll be doing is I'll be bringing a canister stove just like I did on my FKT attempt. And I cannot fly with fuel. So I cannot bring a fuel canister with me over to Reno. So I'll pick up a fuel canister once I land. But anyway, I will do a full gear video probably sometime towards the end of this month. Uh, I have one more item that I have to pick up, but other than that, I got everything already all set for my through hike. And the last detail is vlogging. So I will be vlogging my entire John Muir Trail through hike. I will be doing daily vlogs. The only thing I don't know is how often I'm going to be able to upload them. I don't know how sketchy the service is out there. From what I've read, it's going to be hit or miss. Even though I have Verizon, it's not going to be like the Appalachian Trail and how great service is out on the East Coast. So we'll kind of see how things play out and how I'll upload that. Worst case scenario, I probably won't be able to get videos up till every four or five, six days, just kind of depending on the service and where I'm at. Now, I will be wearing my GoPro when I go up Half Dome. So I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna bring a GoPro with. I will be able to get a first person view of climbing up Half Dome. So I'll do a video just climb up Half Dome. That will be really sweet. I'm really excited about that. So stay tuned, lots of great things. I'll be vlogging the entire John Muir Trail through hike. And with me having so much time, really want to capture the essence of through hiking the John Muir Trail. So this is going to be an awesome vlog, a different vlog than what you've probably seen with the Appalachian Trail with my last FKT attempt at the Spear Hiking Trail. So I'm really stoked about it. So that kind of wraps up all of the big details of my through hike. Again, I have plenty of videos coming up that I'm gonna talk more details of elements like permitting, resupplying, things like that gear so that you can have some help on how to plan your John Muir Trail through hike. If you have any questions about my personal through hike and details that I missed out that you think is important for me to share, please make sure you comment that below. And of course, if there's anything that I did not mention about future videos that I'll be doing that you think is extremely valuable, please make sure you put those in the comments below. A lot of the ideas that I get on videos that I do comes from you guys. So make sure you give me that feedback. So stay tuned for many sightings and remember to always follow Bigfoot.